The Satanic Thoughts of Gulu Googly Gul Hassan Googly was perhaps the best leg spinner and googly bowler in the country about three decades ago. He brilliantly combined leg spinners with chest-high flippers and amazing googlies, showing exceptional intelligence. He was a nightmare for the best batsmen including test cricketers, and earned the befitting nickname, Gulu Googly. He was equally outstanding in his studies. No one could make out whether his brilliance in studies was the cause of his cricketing abilities, or whether he derived philosophical inspiration from the game of cricket and applied it to his academic life. He was often seen meditating either at the cricket ground or in the library. Though young and raw, he was never intimidated by the name and fame of a batsman he bowled at. He always bowled with utmost ease to the best of batsmen. As if he was bowling to non-entities. His philosophy was simple, always approach and explore a deeper understanding for a breakthrough. He was often heard saying, hesitation and fear keep you at a distance from achievement. He thus bowled fearlessly at renowned batsmen without any awe. Similar was his approach in the classroom. Teachers, and what they taught, inspired him to discover more. He craved for clarity. Unless he was convinced with an answer his curiosity persisted. His teachers and classmates remarked ominously, Gulu Googly will run into serious trouble someday. The first symptoms of his running into trouble surfaced when he was totally absorbed in listening to a lecture by his teacher who taught Islamiyat, Islamic studies. He was delivering a lecture on the omnipresence of God. At the end of the lecture Gulu Googly rose to his feet and asked, Sir, what I understand from your lecture is that God is here, God is there, God is everywhere. Am I right? The teacher smiled and said, You are absolutely right, Gulu. Without hesitating, Gulu asked, Then why do we offer prayers facing Makkah in the West? The teacher couldn't believe his ears. Flabbergasted, he asked, What did you say? Gulu repeated the question, why do Muslims offer prayers while facing Makkah when God is everywhere? Come here. The fat and flabby teacher clenched his fists, ground his teeth, and said, Let me tell you why we offer prayers with our face turned towards Makkah. Gulu Googly walked up to his teacher. The big and burly teacher slapped him furiously on the face several times. Gulu was left stunned. The teacher caught hold of Gulu's head in his big hands and twisted his face towards the west, and shouted, This is why Muslims offer prayers facing the westwards. Never before in the entire history of the college had a lecturer or a professor ever slapped a student in the classroom. The astonished students watched the ugly drama in horror. The hefty teacher's hands were as hard as a hammer. Gulu Googly staggered backwards and hit a bench in the front row. He looked dazed and bewildered. He collected himself, regained his senses, and asked, Why did you hit me, sir? Why did I hit you? The big, bearded teacher angrily pulled Gulu by his hair, turned his face towards the west, and said, Muslims are preordained to offer prayers facing Makkah. But sir, didn't you tell us God is omnipresent? Bewildered Gulu Googly asked. Didn't you tell us God is everywhere? The big and burly teacher of Islam yet again roughed up Gulu Googly severely. He slapped him, kicked him and banged his head against the wall. The teacher then ominously looked at the frightened students and said, I have made an example out of Gulu for the rest of the spoilt students who nurture sacrilegious thoughts in their dirty heads. The students sat dumbfounded. The enormous teacher then threatened the puzzled students, and warned them in a menacing manner, Satan misguides us, distracts us and confuses us. Don't listen to the satanic voice. Curb satanic thoughts within yourselves, else you will run into trouble like Gulu Googly. These are not satanic thoughts, pleaded the baffled Gulu Googly. He said, I was just trying to understand, to find out. Why we turn our face towards Makkah while praying when God is everywhere. You are possessed. 
The enraged teacher banged Gulu's head against the wall several times and shouted, It's not you. It is Satan within you that speaks. An innocent query turned everything topsy-turvy in Gulu Googly's life. It brought to an end his amazing bowling career at a time when he was knocking at the door of test cricket. His greatest dream was shattered. The matter was reported to the principal of the college. Gulu Googly was no ordinary student in the college. The conscientious principal tried to prevail upon the Islam Yat teacher, but to no avail. Fuming with rage the burly teacher said, Gulu Googly is undoubtedly possessed by Satan. His presence in the class would have an evil influence on the other students. He should be rusticated from the college. The principal tried to calm him. Why didn't you tell the boy that it was always good for unanimity and discipline if we all prayed facing one direction? Ask him, wouldn't it look chaotic if people in a congregation prayed in different directions? Islam Yad is not your subject, Professor Pinto Garcia. The burly teacher rebuked the principal of the college. You are a professor of physics. Better stick to your subject. As soon as the students learned about the incident they split into two groups. One group supported Gulu Googly and other backed the Islam Yat teacher. The atmosphere in the college became dangerously tense. Those were treacherous years for Pakistan. General Zial Haq had taken over the country. He and the crack clergy were thinking of turning Pakistan into the citadel of Islam. In their holy alliance they had effectively inducted their agents among the students in colleges and universities. The neo-Islamist students A covered the college with banners, demonstrated with placards and raised slogans, Death to the profane. Death to the blasphemous. Behead the kafir, infidel. The college echoed with the slogans of the charged-up students who believed Gulu Gugli had uttered obnoxious remarks against Islam. They shouted, Death to Gulu Gugli. Behead the Murtad, a Muslim who deserts the Islamic faith. Shaitan Gulu Ko Sungsar Karo, Stone Gulu the Satan. Gulu Gugli rapidly climbed the stairs to the first floor of the social sciences wing of the college. He hid behind a huge column and looked at the angry crowd of students. Waving clenched fists they yelled, Rusticate Gulu the sinner. Gulu is sacrilegious. Kill him, kill him. Gulu Googly's case bewildered everyone. They wondered how an innocent remark or a query could put a person in such serious trouble. He suddenly finds himself going through a soul-shattering experience. The mills of fate grind him. Thereafter nothing remains the same for him. Gulu Googly was a man with a clean conscience. He naturally felt upset. A sportsman to the core, he tried to wriggle out of the cobweb of this unexpected quandary on his own. He refused to be sandwiched between his supporters and opponents. Friends, what have I done that you want to shed my blood? Gulu Googly appeared on the balcony of the college library. He spoke at the top of his voice. I sincerely desire to know when God is everywhere then why do we offer prayers facing the Kaaba in Makkah? The violent group of students, instead of entering into communion with him, rushed towards the stairs leading to the library. Gulu Googly's supporters blocked their way. A few senior professors intervened in time and averted a clash between the two groups. The teachers cooled the warring students' tempers and separated them. They then escorted Gulu Googly to the office of the principal. In the scuffle of the last few hours, Gulu Googly had turned into a resolute person. He held on to the famous resolve he had always shown during tough matches, never cave in against the odds. On his way to the principal's office, Gulu asked the senior professors, Have I done something seriously wrong? They looked at him and said nothing. I just want to know. That is all sir. Gulu repeated his question, why do we offer prayers facing west when God is everywhere? Professor Zaman, 
The senior most professor in the college was a great fan of Gulu Googly. He patted his back affectionately and said, You are not supposed to question what you have been told to do. You are here to obey. But, why sir? Gulu implored. Professor Zaman remained silent. The age of reason hasn't come to an end. Gulu Googly implored, Sir, it is my right to know. It is not your right to know in the society you belong to. The professor slowed his pace. He said, You are commanded to obey, and never to disobey. Raising. Queries is forbidden. Sir, Gulu Googly asked, Do I have to live and die with my doubts? Professor Zaman looked affectionately at Gulu Googly, but said nothing. He withdrew into his own thoughts. Not many people give vent to their feelings. They do not muster up the courage to seek help for the eradication of their doubts. But, occasionally one comes across a person like Gulu Googly who thinks independently, and takes his own decisions. He knowingly chooses an agonizing path strewn with thorns. Gulu Googly was walking in a pensive mood along with his senior teachers. Professor Zaman felt sorry for him and thought, he is carrying an invisible burden that cripples a person. His entire system of knowing and understanding will be paralyzed. He will succumb to the antipathy of a dormant society that shuns reason. Professor Zaman was not correct in his assumption. The more they harassed Gulu, the more determined he turned out to be. Gulu regained confidence, transformed into an indomitable person. As he entered the principal's office along with the senior professors, he was surprised to see his mother and father sitting there. Among the ones already present in the principal's office was his tormentor, the burly, bearded assistant professor of Islamic studies, Sadiq Shahid. He was keenly involved in the Soviet-Afghan war. He openly encouraged students to participate in the holy war on behalf of their brethren in faith, the Afghanis, and die a martyr's death. The mother couldn't control her emotions. She rushed towards her son and took him in her arms. She sobbed, What have you done Gulu? What have you done? Gulu consoled her, brought her back to her seat and said, I have done nothing wrong Amma, mother. The principal announced his short and quick verdict, Gulu will not attend college for the next six months. Have you thrown him out? Asked the perplexed father. Gulu is the pride of the college. We do not want to lose him. The principal said. Gulu can return to college after six months. By then, hopefully tempers will cool down. Provided he keeps his dirty mouth shut. The Islam Yacht teacher, Sadiq Shahid rose to his feet and thundered, he must keep his satanic thoughts to himself. As a teacher you are duty-bound to dispel my doubts. Gulu, looking straight at his teacher, asked, how is a Muslim astronaut to offer prayers five times a day in space? The teacher twisted in anger. Tell me sir, Gulu asked, how would you offer prayers in space five times a day? Mind you sir, there are no days, no nights in space. It is not him, it is not him. The burly teacher banged his hammer hard fists on the principal's table and shouted at the top of his voice, it is not him. It is Satan within him that speaks. He raised his arms heavenwards, and addressed the persons present in the office of the principal, this boy, Gulu Googly speaks on behalf of Satan. Everyone shuddered. He then turned towards Gulu's parents, and warned them, Your son is possessed by satanic forces. Tell me sir, Gulu asked, How would you observe Rosa, fast, at Antarctica during the month of Ramazan? The Islam Yacht teacher turned towards the principal and asked, Would you still say that Gulu doesn't talk on behalf of Satan? The parents made a swift move, and took their son away. It triggered unending ordeals for Gulu Googly when trapped in two types of circumstances man becomes eccentric. The first, when he loses sight of reality and fails to comprehend reason. 
and the second, when his faith in the Creator dwindles. He then seeks solace from different sources. Instead of coming to grips with the problem he looks hither and thither for help. This is exactly what happened to Gulu Googly's parents. Gulu Googly's mother was semi-literate. She had unflinching faith in the living and dead peers and fakirs. She was a regular visitor to the shrines of the departed saints and Sufis. She firmly believed Satan had taken hold of her son. The words of the Islam Yat teacher kept echoing in her ears, Satan speaks from within your son. She confided to her husband, I am worried about Gulu. The father was a reasonably educated person, employed in a government department. He thought his son had become psychotic. Like most of educated people he commenced counseling his son. Forget what your teacher told you. He talked to his son. You are perfectly all right. I am all right, Baba, Father. Gulu sounded emphatic. There is nothing wrong with me. I don't say there is anything wrong with you. You are absolutely fine. The father spoke like a psychiatrist. I was trying to tell you, my son, that you have not been to the nets for weeks. Why don't you go for practice? The idea clicked. Gulu Googly went to the Jahangir Kotari Cricket Park where his team practiced. As he approached the nets the boys looked at him suspiciously. Instead of greeting him they whispered inaudible words in each other's ears. Gulu tried to smile. But no one responded. Hi, he said, I am Gulu Googly. They looked at him coolly. Gulu felt uncomfortable. He stood there bewildered not knowing what to do next. Gaffer Ali, the hard-hitting batsman of the team, was batting in the nets. Gulu talked to the captain and asked, May I bowl to him? Before the captain could say anything some of the boys protested and said, We will not practice with a kafir infidel. Gulu was taken aback. He shouted at the boys, I am not a kafir. I am not a kafir. The captain was a conscientious person. He went up to Gulu, and said, The boys are fuming. You better return home. But I am not a kafir, Gulu reacted angrily. He caught hold of the captain by his arms and shouted, I am not a kafir. The boys came running to rescue their captain. Gulu released the captain, stood firmly in front of the boys and said, I am not a kafir. Are you listening to me? I am not a kafir. I am Gulu Googly. I am Gulu Googly. The captain gestured to the boys to stay away from Gulu. He took Gulu in his arms, and held him firmly against his heart. I know you are Gulu Googly our great right arm leg spinner. Gulu for the first time since the beginning of his unfortunate ordeal broke down. Resting his head on the shoulder of his captain, he said, Captain, Captain, I am not a kafir. I know you are not. He escorted Gulu to the gate of the Jahangir Kotari Cricket Park and hired a cab to drop him to his house. Before getting into the cab, Gulu said, I am not a kafir. The captain patted his back and said, Surely you are not. Gulu Googly turned around and said, I just wanted to know why we offer prayers facing west when God is everywhere. I know that Gulu. The captain touched him tenderly. It was a query, nothing more than that. Gulu got into the cab. The captain closed the door. As the cab moved away they both waved to each other. The father was surprised to see Gulu back so early. He asked, didn't you practice? They wouldn't let me play. Why? They refused to play with a kafir. Without looking at his father Gulu Googly went to his room. Gulu is definitely possessed. The mother said to her husband, let us take him to Pir Sain. The baffled father was left with no option but to submit to his wife's will. They took Gulu to Pir Sain and narrated the entire story to him. Pir Sain had long curly hair and an enormous beard on his face. 
His eyes were small and bright like those of a hyena. He looked straight into Gulu's eyes and spoke in a hoarse voice. Shaden, Satan. Boo. Gulu booed at Pier sighing, and said, I am not Shaden. I am Gulu Googly. Shaden lives within your son. Pier Sain spoke to the parents. Leave him with us for a month. We will drive Shaden out of him. The parents paid a heavy Nazrana offering and left their son at the mercy of Pier Sain. After one month they returned to take custody of their son. What they received was almost a skeleton in the name of their son, feeble, bruised and burnt all over his body. He was beaten and branded with red-hot iron bars. He staggered and collapsed in his mother's lap, and said, I am not Shaden, Amen. The parents have confined Gulu Googly, now 52 years old, in an isolated room in the house. Most of the time he spins a tennis ball, and bowls at the walls. Occasionally you hear him yell, how is that? If you meet him he would say, I am not Shaden. I am Gulu Googly.